Hey guys, so here's a quick video on dedicated load balancers. Someone left a comment the other day in one of my other videos, so I thought I'd put together uh, this quick overview on dedicated load balancers in general, how to set them up, and kind of the benefits that you'll get from leveraging a dedicated load balancer within your Anypoint platform deployment. So let's give you a little background on load balancers within Cloud Hub first before we actually get into the tooling. So uh, when you deploy your application into the shared work cloud, we have the concept of a shared load balancer. This is one that's shared across all customers um, that are have deployed into a shared work cloud, right? It's, it's a cloud that they haven't set up, you know, their own VP, they haven't set up their own VPC. These workers get set up within that cloud, uh, worker cloud. So when they deploy the application and someone makes a request to appname.region.cloudhub.io, the shared load balancer will go ahead and take that request and route it accordingly based on the app name as well as the ports. So if you have an HTTP request, that gets mapped to port 8081. And if you have an HTTPS request, that gets mapped to port 8082. Uh, additionally, you can bypass the shared load balancer and go directly to the worker by going to mule-worker-appname.region.cloudhub.io. Um, you also have to add the port number in there when you make that request. And, Generally, of course, it's 8081 or 8082, okay? For the dedicated load balancer, this is when you go ahead and spin up your own VPC or you set up your own VPC for your organization. And this is a private worker cloud, right? So you're deploying these apps into your own VPC. They're not sharing these with other customers. They're dedicated to you. You set up a VPC connection or a VPN connection into your data center. And then when you want to go ahead and set up a dedicated load balancer, there's a setting within the Runtime Manager that allows you to set up a dedicated load balancer that's tied to this VPC, right? It's deployed into the VPC environment. It's going to handle a request from the, the, the public internet or from internally um, to handle that traffic to the workers that are deployed into this private worker cloud. So um, that dedicated load balancer has its own DNS name, right? So it's load balancer name.lb.anypointdns.net. And of course, with the dedicated load balancer, you can put a vanity URL on top of that. So instead of that URL, it could be, you know, example.com, right? So when a user hits that endpoint, that traffic is routed to the worker, same way it is with a shared load balancer. But instead of port 80 to 81, there are some different port numbers for the internal uh, worker cloud, right, or the internal workers. Um, so 80 gets routed to 91, 8091, and then uh, HTTPS traffic, or 4 for 3, gets routed to 8092. And then in addition to changes in the ports also, uh, in terms of how the routing is set up, with the dedicated load balancer, when you set up the dedicated load balancer, you can actually set up different mapping rules. So the, the most basic one, of course, is when you put a forward slash app name, that will go ahead and set that mapping and route that request to the app name .region .cloud Hub .io, right? Similar to kind of the, the public load balancer where it's going to go ahead and route the request to the, the underlying worker. So once this request is, is mapped to that specific underlying worker, that traffic's going to go ahead and, and be routed to that worker and then return the result response back to the end user, okay? And then similar to the, the shared load balancer, you also have the concept of the, you know, bypassing the dedicated load balancer. Generally, you would go ahead and turn this off, right? You would go ahead and turn on the firewall rules uh, or delete the firewall rules to allow traffic to port 881, 82, 82 um, and, and lock those down to that, that private worker cloud within your AnyPoint platform environment, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the platform and show you how to set up a dedicated load balancer. So uh, once you're logged into any point platform, you're gonna go ahead and uh, navigate to the Runtime Manager. And of course, we're gonna go ahead and assume of, again that you've already set up a VPC. So let's jump into the VPC really quick and check some settings here just to um, solidify some of the stuff, content that we kind of went over. So a VPC is already set up. You've assigned it a cedar block uh, for a certain uh, IP range. Uh, additionally, within the firewall rules, so again, as we talked about earlier, within a the dedicated load balancer and the shared load balancer, we route requests based off of the certain protocol. So HTTP corresponds to 8081, HTTPS corresponds to 8082 for the shared load balancer. For the dedicated load balancer, you can see that these two on the bottom here, HTTP private port and HTTPS private port, these correspond to 8091 and 8092. And these only allow traffic from the local VPC. So 
Um, this would be within your data center or your own private cloud um, within that subnet that's communicating with these uh, workers within this VPC. They're going to route that traffic over 80, you know, uh, through port 8091 or 8092. And then when you uh, set up a dedicated load balancer, that dedicated load balancer gets deployed and set up within that VPC. So that internal traffic is going from the dedicated load balancer to those workers over those specific ports. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and switch over to the load balancer side. You can see that my account currently is allowed one load balancer to be set up for this business group. So we're going to go ahead and click on create load balancer and we're going to give the load balancer a name. So let's go ahead and call it a uh, dedicated load balancer demo. We're going to select the VPC. So again, remember that the dedicated load balancer can only be deployed into a single VPC. You can't have a dedicated load balancer go across multiple VPCs because it's actually deployed into that specific VPC. So let's go ahead and select demo VPC. Um, it's going to actually spin up two different workers. So, you know, in case of failover, uh, you can go ahead and change the timeout in seconds. So, um, you know, in case that a request comes in, you know, how long it has to process that request, you can change this. Uh, we're gonna leave the whitelisted CEDAR range to be everywhere for now, but again, you can change this to only be um, a set of IPs within that specific VPC uh, or specific sub, uh, a range of IP addresses for the inbound HTTP mode. So this corresponds to the dedicated load balancer itself. If you set it to off, it's going to go ahead and drop any HTTP request um, that uh, hits the dedicated load balancer, uh, only allows HTTPS traffic. If you turn it to on, it's going to accept only HTTPS traffic and then route the request based off the mapping rules and then redirect. If an, a request comes in as HTTP, it's going to go ahead and redirect it to HTTPS and then route the traffic through the load balancer. So those are some variations on the in, inbound HTTP, HTTP mode. Uh, there are a couple options here, disabled static IPs. So this will actually change the dedicated load balancer to only use dynamic, a, a, dynamic IP uh, when it spins up a worker. So this isn't recommended to disable this static IP. Um, keep URL encoding. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, support TLS 1.0. Again, that's not recommended. And then upstream TLS will send the requests using TLS 1.2 uh, instead of, I think the default is 1.1. .1. Okay. And then uh, before we go ahead and set up and deploy this dedicated load balancer, you need to go ahead and add certificates. Um, there's uh, instructions under documentation to how to generate some uh, self-signed uh, service certificates. I've already gone ahead and done that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select some certificates to go ahead and upload. Uh, let's go ahead and use this public key and this private key. And then the client certificate's optional. Um, I'll probably have another video later on that kind of talks about setting up a uh, CA certificate for the dedicated load balancer using um, Let's Encrypt. And then for the mapping rules, so we'll leave the default mapping rules for now, but um, you can go into the documentation to kind of learn about different URL, URL mapping rules. Um, for the mapping rules, generally it's going to be, you know, it can be by app name or by subdomain. And then you also want to make sure that you set the protocol that it's going to go ahead and uh, communicate with the backend workers, right? So again, remember HTTP is 80. Uh, 91 HTTPS is 8092. Uh, so when you deploy your workers into the VPC, make sure that they're listening on those specific ports to allow the dedicated load balancer to route those requests um, to the corresponding applications. Okay. So let's go ahead and save the certificate. And that's going to save the certificate. That's going to be deployed to the dedicated load balancer workers. Um, and then once these, the certificates gets saved, we can go ahead and um, start up the dedicated load balancers. Okay, so back on the screen, we can go ahead now and click on create load balancer. And let's go ahead, it's gonna go ahead and set up the load balancer now with these configurations. Okay, uh, so it takes a couple seconds for the dedicated load balancer to be deployed and spun up. You can see that once it's spun up, it's gonna show the status uh, to be started. If we go ahead and click back on the dedicated load balancer name, you'll see that it, it's gone ahead and assigned static IPs to this load balancer. Um, and then this is the DNS name that you need to go ahead and hit the load balancer. So if we take this 
and you can see that currently I actually went ahead and changed the inbound HTTP mode to redirect and then for the mapping rules if we remember correctly it's going to go ahead if you put a forward slash app name it's going to go ahead and redirect it to the corresponding application that you have deployed within uh, that specific v VPC. So I've got a couple here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ch uh, select the DLB dash demo here. Um, let's go ahead and switch over to Safari. So if we go ahead and paste in that DNS name and put in uh, DLB demo and then a uh, you know endpoint that's exposed, it's going to go ahead. Uh, pass the request to the ded dedicated load bouncer. You can see that it went ahead and redirected me to HTTPS um, and then went ahead and hit that specific worker on the back end. Okay. So hopefully this gave you guys a good understanding of the dedicated load bouncer at a high level. Again, if you guys have any questions, um, uh, please feel free to leave some comments and I'll be happy to respond uh, as soon as I can. Thanks.